What should you do before making a U-turn? Give an arm signal as well as using your indicators. Check road markings to see that U-turns are permitted. Look over your shoulder for a final check. Select a higher gear than normal. If you have to make a U-turn, slow down and ensure that the road is clear in both directions. Make sure that the road is wide enough for you to carry out the manoeuvre safely. What's the maximum speed of powered wheelchairs or scooters used by disabled people? 8 miles per hour 12 miles per hour 16 miles per hour 20 miles per hour Some powered wheelchairs and mobility scooters are designed for use on the pavement only and cannot exceed 4 miles per hour, 6 kilometers per hour. Others can go on the road as well, and this category cannot exceed 8 miles per hour, 12 kilometers per hour. Take great care around these vehicles. They're extremely vulnerable because of their low speed and small size. You're on a good dry road surface. Your brakes and tyres are good. What's the typical overall stopping distance? At 40 miles per hour. 23 metres. 75 feet. 36 metres. 118 feet. 53 metres. 175 feet. 96 metres. 315 feet. Stopping distances are affected by a number of variables. These include the type, model and condition of your vehicle, the road and weather conditions and your reaction time. Look well ahead for hazards and leave enough space between you and the vehicle in front. This should allow you to pull up safely if you have to, without braking sharply. You take the wrong route and find you're on a one-way street. What should you do? Reverse out of the road. Turn around in a side road. Continue to the end of the road. Reverse into a driveway. Never reverse or turn your vehicle around in a one-way street. It's illegal and could even cause a collision. If you've taken a wrong turn, Carry on along the one-way street and find another route, checking the direction signs as you drive. Stop in a safe place if you need to check a map. Your motorway journey is boring and you feel drowsy. What should you do? Stop on the hard shoulder for a sleep. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. Speed up to arrive at your destination sooner. Slow down and let other drivers overtake. Never stop on the hard shoulder to rest. If there's no service area for several miles, leave the motorway at the next exit and find somewhere safe and legal to pull over. You're following a cyclist. What should you do when you wish to turn left just ahead? Overtake the cyclist before you reach the junction. Pull alongside the cyclist and stay level until after the junction. Hold back until the cyclist has passed the junction. Go around the cyclist on the junction. Make allowances for cyclists and give them plenty of room. Don't overtake and then immediately turn left. Be patient and turn behind them when they've passed the junction. While you're driving in fog, it becomes necessary to use front fog lights. What should you remember? Only use them in heavy traffic conditions. Don't use them on motorways. 
Only use them on dual carriageways. Switch them off when visibility improves. It's illegal to use your fog lights in conditions other than when visibility is seriously reduced, that is, less than 100 meters, 328 feet. Fog lights are very bright and, if you use them when visibility has improved, you could dazzle other drivers. What can cause excessive or uneven tire wear? Faults in the gearbox, faults in the engine, faults in the suspension, Faults in the exhaust system. Uneven wear on your tyres can be caused by the condition of your vehicle. Having the vehicle serviced regularly will ensure that the brakes, steering, suspension and wheel alignment are maintained in good order. Who may use Toucan crossings? Motorcyclists and cyclists motorcyclists and pedestrians, only cyclists, cyclists and pedestrians. There are some crossings where cycle routes lead cyclists to cross at the same place as pedestrians. These are called toucan crossings. Always look out for cyclists, as they're likely to be approaching faster than pedestrians. Where on a motorway would you find green reflective studs? Separating driving lanes, between the hard shoulder and the carriageway, at slip road entrances and exits, between the carriageway and the central reservation. Knowing the colours of the reflective studs on the road will help you judge your position, especially at night, in foggy conditions, or when visibility is poor. What does this sign mean? With flow bus and cycle lane. Contraflow bus and cycle lane. No buses and cycles allowed. No waiting for buses and cycles. Buses and cycles can travel in this lane. In this example, they'll flow in the same direction as other traffic. If it's busy, they may be passing you on the left so watch out for them. Times on the sign will show the lane's hours of operation. If no times are shown, or there's no sign at all, this means the lane is in operation 24 hours a day. In some areas, other vehicles, such as taxis and motorcycles, are allowed to use bus lanes. The sign will show if this is the case. What does eco-safe driving achieve? Increased fuel consumption, Improved road safety, damage to the environment, increased exhaust emissions. The emphasis is on hazard awareness and planning ahead. By looking well ahead, you'll have plenty of time to deal with hazards safely and won't need to brake sharply. This will also reduce damage to the environment. What does this sign mean? Leave motorway at next exit. Lane for heavy and slow vehicles. All lorries use the hard shoulder. Rest area for lorries. Where there's a long, steep, uphill gradient on a motorway, a crawler lane may be provided. This helps the traffic to flow by diverting the slower heavy vehicles into a dedicated lane on the left. Where would you find these road markings? At a railway crossing. 
at a mini roundabout. On a motorway. On a pedestrian crossing. These markings show the direction in which the traffic should go at a mini roundabout. You're travelling along a motorway. Where would you find a crawler or climbing lane? On a steep gradient. Before a service area. Before a junction. Along the hard shoulder. Large, slow-moving vehicles can hinder the progress of other traffic. On a steep gradient, an extra crawler lane may be provided for slow-moving vehicles to allow faster-moving traffic to flow more easily. You're driving in traffic at the speed limit for the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? Move closer to the car ahead so the driver behind has no room to overtake. Wave the driver behind to overtake when it's safe. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. Accelerate to get away from the driver behind. Keep a steady course to give the driver behind an opportunity to overtake safely. If necessary, slow down. Reacting incorrectly to another driver's impatience can lead to danger. While you're driving, a warning light on your vehicle's instrument panel comes on. What should you do? Continue if the engine sounds all right. Hope that it's just a temporary electrical fault. Deal with the problem when there's more time. Check out the problem quickly and safely. Make sure you know what the different warning lights mean. An illuminated warning light could mean that your car is unsafe to drive. If you aren't sure about the problem, get a qualified mechanic to check it. What safeguard could you take against fire risk to your vehicle? Keep water levels above maximum. Check out any strong smell of fuel. Avoid driving with a full tank of fuel. Use fuel additives. The fuel in your vehicle can be a dangerous fire hazard. If you smell fuel, check out where it's coming from. Never use a naked flame near the vehicle if you can smell fuel. Smoke when refueling your vehicle. Anti-lock brakes reduce the chances of skidding. When is this particularly important? When you're driving down steep hills. When you're braking during normal driving. When you're braking in an emergency. When you're driving on good road surfaces. The anti-lock braking system, ABS, will operate when the brakes have been applied harshly and the wheels are about to lock, such as during an emergency. ABS will reduce the likelihood of your car skidding, but it isn't a substitute for safe and responsible driving. Why should you never wave people across at pedestrian crossings? Another vehicle may be coming. They may not be looking. It's safer for you to carry on. They may not be ready to cross. If people are waiting to use a pedestrian crossing, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't wave them across the road, because another driver may not have seen them, may not have seen your signal, and may not be able to stop safely. Your vehicle is stationary. When may you use its horn? When another road user poses a danger. When the road is blocked by queuing traffic. When it's used only briefly. When signalling 
that you've just arrived. When your vehicle is stationary, only sound the horn if you think there's a risk of danger from another road user. Don't use it just to attract someone's attention. This causes unnecessary noise and could be misleading. What should you do when you see two elderly pedestrians about to cross the road ahead? Expect them to wait for you to pass. Speed up to get past them quickly. Stop and wave them across the road. Be careful. They may misjudge your speed. Older people may have impaired hearing, vision, concentration and judgement. They may also walk slowly and so could take a long time to cross the road. You're on a road that's only wide enough for one vehicle. A car is coming towards you. What should you do? Pull into a passing place on your right. Force the other driver to reverse. Pull into a passing place if your vehicle is wider. Pull into a passing place on your left. Pull into the nearest passing place on the left if you meet another vehicle on a narrow road. If the nearest passing place is on the right, wait opposite it. When are anti-lock brakes of most use to you? When you're braking gently. When you're braking on rural roads. When you're braking harshly. When you're braking on a motorway. Anti-lock brakes won't be needed when you're braking normally. Looking well down the road and anticipating possible hazards could prevent you from having to brake late and harshly. Knowing that you have anti-lock brakes isn't an excuse to drive in a careless or reckless way. You're waiting at a level crossing. The red warning lights continue to flash after a train has passed by. What should you do? Get out and investigate. Telephone the signal operator. Continue to wait. Drive across carefully. At a level crossing, flashing red lights mean you must stop. If the train passes but the lights keep flashing, wait. Another train may be coming. You see a pedestrian carrying a white stick with a red band. What does this tell you? They have limited mobility. They're deaf. They're blind. They're deaf and blind. When someone is deaf as well as blind, they may carry a white stick with a red reflective band. They may not be aware that you're approaching, and they may not be able to hear anything. So, for example, your horn would be ineffective as a warning to them. Who has priority at an unmarked crossroads? The larger vehicle. No one has priority. The faster vehicle. The smaller vehicle. Practice good observation in all directions before you emerge or make a turn. Proceed only when you're sure it's safe to do so. You're driving down a steep hill. Why could it be dangerous to keep the clutch down or roll in neutral for too long? Fuel consumption will be higher. Your vehicle will pick up speed. It will damage the engine. It will wear tyres out more quickly.
driving in neutral or with the clutch down for long periods is known as coasting. There will be no engine braking and your vehicle will pick up speed on downhill slopes. Coasting can be very dangerous because it reduces steering and braking control. What's badly affected if the tyres are underinflated? Braking. Indicating. Changing gear. Parking. Your tyres are your only contact with the road. To prevent problems with braking and steering, keep your tyres free from defects. They must have sufficient tread depth and be correctly inflated. Correct tyre pressures help reduce the risk of skidding and provide a safer and more comfortable drive or ride. Why must these road markings be kept clear? To allow school children to be dropped off. To allow teachers to park. To allow school children to be picked up. To allow a clear view of the crossing area. The markings are there to show that the area must be kept clear. This is to allow an unrestricted view for approaching drivers and riders children wanting to cross the road. What does the curved arrow on the road mean? Heavy vehicles should take the next road on the left to avoid a weight limit. The road ahead bends to the left. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. The road ahead has a camber to the left. In this picture, the road marking shows that overtaking drivers or riders need to return to the left. These markings show the direction drivers must pass hatch markings or solid double white lines. They are also used to show the route that high vehicles should take under low arched bridges. You're driving behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left but steers to the right? Slow down and let the vehicle turn. Drive on, keeping to the left. Overtake on the right of it. Hold your speed and sound your horn. Large, long vehicles need extra room when making turns at junctions. They may move out to the right in order to make a left turn. Keep well back and don't attempt to pass them on their left. What can a loose filler cap on your diesel fuel tank cause? It can make the engine difficult to start. It can make the road slippery for other road users. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption. It can increase the level of exhaust emissions. Diesel fuel can spill out if your filler cap isn't secured properly. This is most likely to occur on bends, junctions and roundabouts, where it will make the road slippery, especially if it's wet. At the end of a dry spell of weather, the road surfaces may have a high level of diesel spillage that hasn't been washed away by rain. When leaving your vehicle, where should you try to park? Opposite a traffic island. In a secure car park on a bend, at or near a taxi rank. Whenever possible, leave your car in a secure car park. This will help deter thieves. Which of these will help you to keep your car secure? Vehicle Breakdown Organization Vehicle Watch Scheme Advanced Drivers Scheme Car Maintenance Class
The Vehicle Watch Scheme helps to reduce the risk of your car being stolen. By displaying high visibility vehicle watch stickers in your car, you're inviting the police to stop your vehicle if it's seen in use between midnight and 5 a.m. Which of the following types of glasses shouldn't be worn when driving at night? Half moon, round, bifocal, tinted. If you're driving at night or in poor visibility, tinted lenses will reduce the efficiency of your vision by reducing the amount of light reaching your eyes. What must you do at this junction? Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. Stop beyond the line at a point where you can see clearly. Stop only if there's traffic on the main road. Stop only if you're turning right. The stop sign has been put here because the view into the main road is poor. You must stop because it won't be possible to take proper observation while you're moving. What would suggest you're driving on ice? There's less wind noise. There's less tyre noise. There's less transmission noise. There's less engine noise. Drive extremely carefully when the roads are icy. When travelling on ice, tyres make virtually no noise and the steering feels light and unresponsive. In icy conditions, be very gentle when braking, accelerating and steering. It's a very windy day and you're about to overtake a cyclist. What should you do? Overtake very slowly. Keep close as you pass. Sound your horn repeatedly. Allow extra room. Cyclists and motorcyclists are very vulnerable in high winds. They can easily be blown well off course and veer into your path. Always allow plenty of room when overtaking them. Passing too close could cause a draft and unbalance the rider. In which circumstances may you use hazard warning lights? When driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind of a hazard ahead. When you're double parked on a two-way road. When your direction indicators aren't working. When warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature. Use them when driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind you of danger ahead. You should also use them if your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. What does this sign mean? No overtaking. No motor vehicles. Clear way, no stopping. Cars and motorcycles only. A sign will indicate which types of vehicles are prohibited from certain roads. Make sure that you know which signs apply to the vehicle you're using. What does this sign mean? Contraflow cycle lane. With flow cycle lane. Cycles and buses only. No cycles or buses. Usually, a picture of a cycle will also be painted on the road, and sometimes the lane will have a different coloured surface. Leave these areas clear for cyclists, and don't pass too closely when you overtake. Your vehicle has broken down on an automatic railway level crossing. What should you do first? Get everyone out of the vehicle and clear of the crossing. Telephone your vehicle recovery service to move it. Walk along the track to give warning 
to any approaching trains. Try to push the vehicle clear of the crossing as soon as possible. First, get yourself and anyone else well away from the crossing. If there's a railway telephone, use that to get instructions from the signal operator. Then, if there's time, move the vehicle clear of the crossing. You're travelling along a motorway. When are you allowed to overtake on the left? When you can see well ahead that the hard shoulder is clear. When the traffic in the right-hand lane is signalling right. When you warn drivers behind by signalling left. When in queues and traffic to your right is moving more slowly than you are. Never overtake on the left. Unless the traffic is moving in queues and the queue on your right is moving more slowly than the one you're in. Some two-way roads are divided into three lanes. Why are these particularly dangerous? Traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. Traffic can travel faster in poor weather conditions. Traffic can overtake on the left. Traffic uses the middle lane for emergencies only. If you intend to overtake, you must consider that approaching traffic could be planning the same manoeuvre. When you've considered the situation and decided it's safe, indicate your intentions early. This will show the approaching traffic that you intend to pull out. On which part of a motorway are amber reflective studs found? Between the hard shoulder and the carriageway. Between the acceleration lane and the carriageway. Between the central reservation and the carriageway. Between each pair of lanes. On motorways, reflective studs of various colours are fixed in the road between the lanes. These help you to identify which lane you're in when it's dark or in poor visibility. Amber-coloured studs are found on the right-hand edge of the main carriageway next to the central reservation. What is a statutory off-road notification? SORN. A notification to tell DVSA that a vehicle doesn't have a current MOT. Information kept by the police about the owner of a vehicle. A notification to tell DVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. Information held by insurance companies to check a vehicle is insured. If you want to keep a vehicle untaxed and off the public road, you must make a SORN. It's an offence not to do so. Your SORN is valid until your vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. Where may you overtake on a one-way street? Only on the left-hand side. Overtaking isn't allowed. Only on the right-hand side. On either the right or the left. You can overtake other traffic on either side when travelling in a one-way street. Make full use of your mirrors and ensure it's clear all around before you attempt to overtake. Look for signs and road markings and use the most suitable lane for your destination. Traffic officers operate on motorways and some primary routes in England and Wales. What are they authorised to do? Stop and arrest drivers who break the law. Repair broken down vehicles on the motorway. Issue fixed penalty notices. 
Stop and direct anyone on a motorway. Traffic officers don't have enforcement powers, but are able to stop and direct people on motorways and some A-class roads. They operate in England and Wales and work in partnership with the police at incidents, providing a highly trained and visible service. They're recognised by an orange and yellow jacket and their vehicle has yellow and black markings. What should you do if a trailer starts to swing from side to side while you're towing it? Ease off the accelerator to reduce your speed. Let go of the steering wheel and let it correct itself. Brake hard and hold the pedal down. Accelerate until it stabilises. Strong winds or buffeting from large vehicles can cause a trailer or caravan to swing from side to side, snake. If this happens, ease off the accelerator. Don't brake harshly, steer sharply, or increase your speed. 